because you saw the gentle face of Martin Luther King, a very nonviolent man. And so in the next slide, we say that abortion is not a civil right. Abortion is genocide, and it takes the life of a person. It kills a person. It murders a person. Now, abortion can be caused with surgery, medicine, and chemicals, and woman with child. The word fetus, in its original translation, means little one. That's what fetus means. And so that little baby in the womb. Now, I would like, as an exercise, I would like for every male no matter how old you are or how young you are, to stand for a moment. If you're a male, please stand. Now this is very, very important. We're going to learn something here. We heard in the video, previous video, a young lady said that the father of the baby was going to give her half the money because that was her problem. But guess what? A baby has 46 chromosomes. So 23 of the chromosomes come from the men, don't they? And so we all have participation. I'm going to show you in just in a moment how wonderful men really, really are. So let's give, let's give them a hand for those 23 chromosomes. <laughs> the other 23 come from mom, and that's the 46 chromosomes that at conception makes that unique and different human being. So that's why the issue of personhood is so important. And you can not say, to a person because his or her skin is browner than yours. You can't say, like they said to Dred Scott, you're three-fifths human. You see? So that's a personhood point that everybody gets right away. But you also can't say to a little baby with 46 chromosomes, you're not human because you're little or because we can't see you. And so it's the same point. Dred Scott was a human being. The baby is a human being. <coughs> And so we must keep that in account. Womb lynching. Our friend Dr. Johnny Hunter, you've heard him say that, haven't you, Pastor? You. Womb lynching is just as bad as using a noose in a tree. Now, I'm not going to take a long time on Planned Parenthood, but please explore and investigate uh, their position for yourself. We were praying at Planned Parenthood today. People say all the time, why are you so hard on Planned Parenthood? They do a lot of good stuff. But I like to say it like this. We had a lovely meal tonight, and I'm a pretty good cook. So I'm going to make some brownies with organic sugar and eggs and butter, the best cocoa that I could get anywhere on the planet. And it's going to be all rich and chocolatey and wonderful. Now, when I get ready to frost those brownies, and they're really good, the best you can get anywhere, but I'm going to step out into the yard with a teaspoon and get a little brown dog poo poo. Okay? <laughs> And I'm going to stir that in there. It's not going to taste different. Somebody might say, oh, this is a unique, what's the secret ingredient? <laughs> but the worms in that, once you eat it, you'll find out. And so, a little leaven spoils the whole lump. One bad apple will spoil the barrel. And so we have to realize that. And let's not just take everything at face value. Let's look at what's being offered. Margaret Sanger, who founded Planned Parenthood, said, Negroes are like weeds, and they need to be exterminated, but we don't want the word to get out. So we have to cultivate their leaders. And so, one of the leaders in the 20th century time that they chose to cultivate was Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Somebody wrote me and said, well, why didn't he know what they were doing? Why didn't I know what they were doing? Why didn't many of us know what they were doing? There's an expose they going on now, so a lot of people know what they're doing now. So they say, Dr. King, we want to commend you for your work. This is 1966. And we want to give you an award, and we'll give an award to others. And Dr. King had heard that Margaret Sanger did nonviolent protests to support the birth control league. And so it sounded like she was doing the same kind of work he was doing. They were on record in 1966 as saying that abortion was genocide because they were supporting at that time birth control and sterilization. Now, Dr. King believed in family planning, but he believed, think about it, in 1966, family planning was natural family planning. And when you heard it, it sounded good because natural family planning is good. So he didn't agree with these estrogen cocktails and these morning after shots to give you strokes and heart attacks. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, nobody really knew about him in that day. 
So, it's a lie to say that Dr. King would have supported choice and would have agreed with killing babies. He was nonviolent. You just looked at that beautiful picture. There was no way that nonviolent man could agree with the violent killing of babies. It's just not possible. So Dr. Sanger and Planned Parenthood, and they still try to be deceptive today, but they are being exposed. <coughs> now, Dr. Sanger's vision is being fulfilled today. It's systematic, and it's on purpose. We have children in the audience, so I'll skip past that little picture. That was a picture of an aborted baby. And you just had dinner, so we'll go past that. We won't dwell on that. I ask the question, how can the dream survive if we murder the children? My mother said something, though, even when it comes down to having to show the pictures of the aborted babies. She says, well, your uncle used to say, America won't reject racism until America sees racism. And I have a friend who writes about Emmett Teal, who was brutally murdered. And his mother said, I'm going to show America what happened to my son. And my mom says, as much as I hate to see them, I agree that we have to show the pictures. And Father Frank Favon says, America will not reject abortion until America sees abortion. And so it's a very traumatizing experience, especially me who had abortion. But sometimes we have to see the reality of our world. In 1950, my mother conceived me. I want you to rewind just a few years to around between the 1920s and 1950. There was a movement in America led by Margaret Sanger called the Birth Control League. A movie came out called Cheaper by the Dozen. Did anybody ever see Cheaper by the Dozen? Raise your hand. And if you didn't see it, please go see it. Because in the family, the couple had 12 children. And Planned Parenthood went to visit them. And so the community sent Planned Parenthood to visit them because they wanted to run Planned Parenthood out of town. They said, oh, we have a couple that would probably be good for you. Please go and meet them. So she goes in with her little birth control league information, and she passes it out. And the dad says, oh, well, I'd like for you to meet someone. This is very interesting material. So he blows his little whistle, and the children come down one by one, and there are 12 of them. The lady says, this is absolutely absurd. Why did they send me to your house? 